I think what we'll do in the future is have a live band to play while we wait for everybody <laughs> to get on. You can get the music app. That'll be good. So uh, on behalf of our chair, uh, Christy Armand, who is on here, I'm George Slift to the Chamber Southwest and the Economic Development Alliance. And thank you to our uh, all of you for joining for our virtual Lunch and Learn program today about the economy here in Southwest Louisiana. And we'll continue to have people join us, I'm sure. Uh, our guest speaker today is Dr. Dan Groff. He's the director of the H.C. Drew Center for Business and Economic Analysis and assistant professor of economics at McNeese State University. And he's also an economist here for the Southwest Louisiana Economic Development Alliance. It's a great partnership that we have between the university and the alliance. After receiving his Ph.D. in economics from LSU, uh, Dr. Groff was assistant professor at McNeese for two years before becoming the economist at Louisiana Economic Development, LED. So he's very uh, involved with uh, looking at the economic development projects, the industries, and all of the incentives. And then he went on to uh, work with the uh, State Department of Revenue. So he's very well versed in all of the uh, policies of the state. And we're very fortunate to have him with us, with us uh, here at the Alliance. And so, uh, Dr. Groff, take it away, and we look forward to seeing what's going on in Southwest Louisiana. Yeah, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yes. You can? Thank you. Um, I really, thank you for giving me this time. I'll try to be as quick as possible with as much info as possible. And I really appreciate everyone who's attending taking a little bit of time during their lunch hour. Um, it is much appreciated to talk about the economy. Uh, pretty much everything I'm gonna talk about, um, we're about to put out a new report on the current standing of our economy due to COVID-19. So this will be on our website, mcneesedrewecon.org. This is where we keep all our data, all our reports, all our updates, and all our graphs and so forth. So um, that will be up soon. And I, once again, I really appreciate you watching, so let's get started. A uh, couple of quick overviews. There is so much information coming out. Every day there's a new news story, there's somebody looking at new data, and you're not really sure what's going to occur. So what I wanted to do was just give a basic overview, try not to get too lost, too wrapped up in everything that keeps coming out, and just give some basic ideas of what's going on. And at the national economy, what we have here is our GDP growth rate. So in June 2009, we left the Great Recession, and ever since then, we had been in growth mode. So our economy had the longest expansion in history until the first quarter of 2020. And the, we are currently in a recession, as called by the NBER, which started in February 2020. Notice that we had a 5% drop in GDP for the first quarter. Now that is only from the second half of the first month in the quarter. So that little time period really hurt our economy. I was looking at the latest forecast next quarter. They are expecting about a 45% drop perhaps. So April, May, and June are really going to hurt the economy. Down here is the total national job. So if you look at the last recession around 2008, there was a slight, there was a gradual drop, you know, still pretty hard, but this COVID-19 was huge. The country lost about 20.7 million jobs and the unemployment rate skyrocketed up to 14.7%. Uh, uh, people expected this trend to continue, but we just found out with May that we did add some more jobs. So the country added 2.5 million jobs in May, which is a record. And the unemployment rate came down to 13.3%. What is very interesting is this is very good news, but if you put it in the context of how much we fell, we still have a long way to go. I hope you can see my uh, my cursor. A lot of people are hoping this is a V-shaped recovery, but as I get into data later, we might see, you might see a more gradual path. So that's sort of where the nation is. Uh, in terms of the state, uh, we followed. Uh, pretty much the whole country followed in the same direction. When you look at our jobs, uh, we lost about 240,000 jobs, the state did. 
and the unemployment rate skyrocketed to 14.5%. There's a saying that Louisiana doesn't do as well in expansions than the nation, but it does better in recessions than the nation due to the industry makeup, energy, and so forth. Uh, it's still too early to tell if that's going to be the case here. We know that our unemployment rate is slightly below the nation's. Uh, we're at 14.5, the nation is at 14.7. Our, un our jobs fell about 12.2% and the nation fell about 13.7%. So in the short term, it's looking like we're doing better, but nobody's doing well, you know, that's the way to put it. You're also probably hearing a lot about unemployment insurance claims. Now, initial claims are first time applicants. So if you're laid off from a job, you go in and you file an unemployment insurance claim. And you see those really start to skyrocket mid-March. And when that occurred, well, lots of people were out of jobs and it started coming down. This just means less people are being fired. You know, you still have a lot of people who are unemployed and that's why a lot of people look at continued claims. If you look at continued claims, these are people who continually receive unemployment insurance benefits. So this is a very good proxy for the number of unemployed persons. So if you look at the state, we had a little drop, but overall we're still you know, very high. So even if tomorrow when the state numbers come out, we get a jump up in jobs and a drop in the unemployment rate, there's still going to be a lot of unemployed persons in this economy. So we are pretty much following the state, following the nation, and pretty much everywhere went the same route. Uh, if you look at our Lake Charles MSA, our MSA consists of Calcasieu and Cameron Parishes, our metropolitan statistical area. And this is where most of the data is available at a higher frequency. If you look at this, this first graph right here, employment and the unemployment rate. Our non-farm employment took a huge dip. We lost 15,300 jobs from March to April. So that's a monthly change. Overall, we lost 23,600 jobs compared to April of last year. So that's a 20.3% drop in our total employment in our area. Let's see, of all the available industries, this is something to point out here, of all the available industries, hospitality and leisure, the hotels, the food, that fell 44%. So almost half of the jobs were eliminated over the year, which is pretty shocking. Uh, we had the second largest monthly drop out of all the areas in the state behind New Orleans, obviously very dependent on tourism, visitors, services, things like that. COVID really hit the service sector hard. We had the second largest percentage drop in employment behind New Orleans. In terms of annual drops, 20.3%, that was the largest. Now, I always want to point this out about our area so that people understand. This construction and this leisure and hospitality, our area is getting hit from both sides. And what we see is that construction, when all the mega projects were being built, especially down in Cameron Parish, construction employment was really skyrocketing. Double digit growth in terms of percentage every single month, things were going great. But once those projects start to wrap up and begin operations, you see this gradual decline in construction. So I always like to say our economy, we had an expected drop. We expected as these projects wrapped up to see a decline in construction employment. But that is much more gradual. But the hit that the service, leisure and hospitality over here, it went from about 15 to about 8,000. That was unexpected. So we're getting hit from a couple of different areas here but part of the drop was expected. The other drop was unexpected due to this COVID drop. If you look at our unemployment rate, we are currently at 14.5%. Now we have the third highest unemployment rate because we are below New Orleans and Hammond. Hammond is a one parish MSA and very connected to New Orleans. So our unemployment rate is the third highest out of all areas in the state. So we have lots of gaming, lots of tourism service sectors. Luckily, our industrial base has been okay, but we are, you know, we are up there in terms of MSAs most hurt in our area. I'd like to give a little bit of other stats about how things are affecting the area economy. This is census data from 
export about exports and imports. Um, this is for the Lake Charles port. It's not indicative of the port, but this just gives an idea about international trade from our area. See, this is a global pandemic, which is what you hear about. This affects many countries, different parts of the world, and a lot of the demand has really dropped. So if you look at April exports out of our port, and this should be indicative of the whole nation, you see that they really drop. And one of the, the biggest drops are really in the mineral fuel category, like refined oil products, liquefied natural gas. You always hear there's a big global drop in demand. So we have falling global demand and it's not just affecting us. And we aren't importing as much, which is what these yellow bars show, and we're not exporting as much. Now, George mentioned that I was an assistant professor. I was at McNeese for two years, and then I left for about six years to go work uh, in Baton Rouge. And I come back and I see more hotels than I ever remembered. The, the hotel I remembered was the Inn on the Bayou before I left. And then I come back and there's everything near Creon Lake Road and Nelson. So it's become a very important part of our economy. This COVID shut that down, right? Or, you know, took a huge hit. Um, if you look at hotel revenues and occupancy rates, over the year, the revenues fell about 7 million, and that's almost a 60% drop in revenues. So people weren't coming to stay in hotels. There were, you know, lots of furloughs, layoffs, and the occupancy rates, they fell dramatically as well. The occupancy rates fell almost 30 percentage points. So Lots of people were not staying in hotels or coming to the area. If you look at all the river boats and slots at the tracks, well, they shut down the casinos mid-March, and that resulted in a 61% drop in revenues. So just that half a month caused a huge drop in revenues before eventually reaching zero in April. So we had no revenues in April. There was no real discernible casino activity. And it just came out yesterday that, well, now in May, they collected about the same as March. So they shut down casinos for about a half a month. And in May, we collected about the same amount. So there are all those restrictions. Um, I believe in May, it was 25% uh, occupancy with 50% gaming capacity. And so you're seeing a slight gradual increase. So hopefully as these restrictions, they're still under restrictions, I believe 50% capacity, 75% gaming, and there might be trepidation for people to travel into the area too. So we have to really track that and hope that it at least reaches back to previous year levels soon. Uh, the airport, uh, a lot of people are not coming into our area at the, El at the uh, Lake Charles Regional Airport and not many people are leaving. Uh, this is monthly data uh, from March. You can see a big drop in both departures and arrivals in terms of passengers. But there's such a lag that we actually track, courtesy of the airport, TSA checkpoint data. You can see that in the beginning of March, you're hovering around 200 until a drastic drop off. And you're getting 18 people going through TSA checkpoints, not as many people leaving uh, the area but eventually we're starting to see some uptick. It's still not up to where it was, but we're seeing a gradual increase. So that's sort of our area's data of what we're watching, plus other things. But you can see like a huge drop in these months, and then we're starting to see gradual upticks back up. In terms of our parishes, now this is what I'm putting in terms of our coronavirus data. Uh, I always say I'm not a medical doctor. I don't know what changes are due to opening, due to increased testing, due to demonstrations. I'm just showing this. And what this shows is these blue bars are the total cumulative cases by parish. These solid lines are the seven day rolling averages of changes in cases. So if you just look at the change in cases, they're very spotty, up, down, it all depends on the quantity of testing and so forth. But the rolling average, you're starting to see more increases in time. That, like I said, that could be due to testing, opening, who, uh, I'm not really taking a part on that, but when you start hearing things like, well, we're entering a second wave, or we never left the first wave, or another shutdown is coming, this is sort of what we're looking at. But you can see that all this increase in cases really affected the shutdown, 
and consequently every single parish in our area. These are our parish unemployment rates. So our parish unemployment rates are now all dramatically higher. Every single parish has been affected by this. It's not just, you know, one or the other. Everything has been affected across the board. Allen Parish currently has the highest unemployment rate in the area at 15.6%, but Calcasieu is the one that really took a big increase. So what I've put in this graph is to show April 2019, so we can compare to the previous year. Then I also so show March, because March started to have some of the effects, and then April. And you can see that Calcasieu, where a lot of the businesses were, a lot of the service businesses, restaurants were constricted, uh, casinos shut down, many different things, they had the largest jump in the unemployment rate over the year. It went uh, about 11.6 percentage points, which is very dramatic. So the only one that's below double digits is Cameron. And Cameron no longer has the lowest unemployment rate in the state anymore. Uh, it is the lowest in the five parish area, but not the lowest in the state. So even Cameron got hit when they were having, even though they're having the booming economy and everything, they got hit as well. The Workforce Commission has been very good finally in coming out with parish level unemployment insurance claims, and they really track what's been happening with the state. So you notice every parish, these are indexed to the middle of March. Every parish was seeing huge increases in unemployment insurance claims. Basically, a lot of people were losing their jobs. Then they started to come down and they've kind of stabilized, but people are still losing jobs, just not as quickly. The continued unemployment insurance claims, they were still elevated throughout May. So that's why I was showing with the state, you're still gonna see a lot of unemployed people throughout the month of May or what we saw. And we're finally starting to see it come down a little bit. Through the first two weeks of June, uh, some went up, some went down, but it's, it's almost flat, slightly downward. So this could indicate a longer recovery. Hopefully things will get back to normal, but it's looking right now like it'll be a little bit longer recovery. Now the sales tax collections, these are very interesting to look at in, in my opinion. We hear a lot about the state taxes, like there's going to be a big budget hole and so forth. Um, if you look at those REC forecasts that were adopted by the state, a lot of those drops came in severance tax, which comes from extraction of minerals and sales taxes. Now I always use the uh, example that, for example, food at home is probably the best example. That's not taxed at the state level, but it is taxed at the parish level. So as more people start buying groceries in preparation for food at home, that helped mitigate at least some of the drops in business. I think it's still too early to tell, of course, but if you just look at where we are through April and May, and these represent sales the previous month, so May tax collections represent sales in April, both Allen and Beauregard saw increases. Uh, in terms of taxable sales and sales tax uh, in Calcasieu and Jeff Davis. These are interesting. Obviously Calcasieu is below where it was a year ago, but I always think this is interesting because we're not seeing a big dip down. And I wanted to sort of point that out, that if you look at the Calcasieu Parish, this is a rolling average of taxable sales. Even though those sales taxes are sort of decreasing, it's sort of just continuing a trend. You see a kind of a sharp dip here from April to May, but it's not, you know, it doesn't look like that employment graph, you know, it's not shooting down. So I think part of this is just due to the continuing drop in the trend because we saw this huge increase in uh, late 17 throughout all of 18 as a lot of these projects were happening and we were experiencing the industrial boom. So if you look at a lot of these sales, and it's not really too, you know, this is obviously down from previous years. These are manufacturing sales. If I look at food sales, if you look at May, April, yeah, they're a little bit lower than the previous year, but they're not drastically lower. You know, it's not, um, it's not like really dipping down. Obviously things like gaming, that will obviously see a huge drop of their taxable sales. 
restaurant sales, you'll see a little bit of a drop. But overall, it's not as bad as it could be. Uh, one part that's really taken a hit is apparel sales. People aren't buying clothes too much. And then Jeff Davis, I wanted to point this out as well. Jeff Davis is very interesting. Their food has been doing well. This includes groceries and restaurants. And their general merchandise has really shot up. So a lot of people were going to the discount stores, the retail stores during the shutdown. So it's not as bad as you would think in terms of sales collection, but it is just the next two months, so we really have to keep an eye on it. A uh, quick thing real quick about SNAP benefits, food stamps. Once March occurred, you saw a huge increase in every parish in terms of recipients, except maybe Cameron, and benefits. So as people lost jobs and they lost their income, there was a need for assistance. I think you'll see this go up next month because they're extending the maximum. They're giving everybody the maximum amount. But that's sort of where we've been. You know, we were doing well, we were kind of falling due to construction, and then it really hit us very hard. So what's the hardest part about this though? All that data is lagging. We're all looking at the previous month. We want to have the most recent data that we can, and everybody started looking at that, right? You hear news stories about the Google Mobility Index. People are looking at where people are traveling based on their Google accounts. Opportunity Insight is a national thing that's looking at credit card transactions. Where are we forecast to go in the next couple of years? This is the most uncertain environment I've ever been in. We don't know what's really going to happen, and all future developments are subject to change. I often say forecasting is like driving a car where the front window is blacked out and the side windows are fuzzy and the back window is completely clear. You know, you, you don't really know what's coming. The only thing you can look at is what's happened before. So all these forecasts have all gone away now prior to the COVID shutdown because nobody saw this coming. But what we're looking at here is we look at mobility data for our economy. Uh, it's much better than Google in terms of granularity, industry, things like that. Uh, this is data that we use from Buxton. What they do is they trace cell phone data. And I'm going to zoom in. They're kind of hard to export. These green bars represent visits every single day for 2020. So April 12th, this is the amount of mobility. And this green line is the seven day rolling average. So you can kind of see what's going on. So this is what happened in 2020. This orange line is what occurred in 2019. So the closer your green line is to your orange line, the closer you are to previous year's visitation. So hopefully this visitation is a measure of business sales being done at different industries, different areas. And what I show here first is just an overall measure, right? And when we first entered the shutdown in March, you see that there was a huge drop, both state, both the state level, Louisiana, and then pretty much all the parishes, Allen, Beauregard, Calcasieu, Cameron, and Jeff Davis. Once the shutdown order happened, everybody, huge visitation drops. Our stay at home order was extended, right? And then we hit May, May 15th, now you start to see it start to come up, right? We start to see a lot more mobility in the parishes. And now it's kind of leveling off. So this is an overall measure. And it shows you that, well, yeah, everybody's happy to get outside right away. And now it's still kind of leveling off. We're still coming back. But what's really interesting to look at with this, which is so great, is you can compare industries as to what's occurred. So when you look at industries that were shut down, you saw huge drops, and then you're starting to see gradual increases. So here's Louisiana restaurants, Allen, Beauregard, Calcasieu, Cameron, Jeff Davis. And although restaurants weren't shut down, of course, they were severely constricted to drive through and takeout. And if you look at Calcasieu, you see that, well, it fell greatly after the stay at home order, and it still stayed relatively low but then once we lifted the stay-at-home order and entered phase one, 
you start to see this increase. And we're starting to see a little bit more now that phase two has begun. But this is overall the pattern that we saw of every single parish, except maybe Jeff Davis. They must love their restaurants a lot, or it might be a smaller sample. But pretty much overall what you see is, well, yes, it was a huge drop. Everybody's kind of happy to get back out. And now we're slowly seeing increases back to previous year level. The gambling industries, I show Louisiana, Allen, and then Calcasieu, where our casinos were. And it was virtually non-existent due to the shutdown. And then once it opened up, you saw a big spike. And now it's gradually sort of going back, which you would expect, right? Because they are constrained in their operations with different levels of capacity and gaming and so forth. But it's still going to take a little while, as long as they're constricted, to get back to where they were the previous year. So when you look at industries that were shut down and compare that to businesses that were deemed essential, you get some very different views, which I think are very interesting. General merchandise, this is classified as stores like Walmart. If you look at this, around in Calcasieu, you start seeing this big increase. You, you would go to the grocery store or Walmart or something, and you'd see everything out. All the napkins would be gone, the, san the hand sanitizer. People were buying a lot until it started to come down. The stay at home order was extended. People started shopping more and it started to go up again. And we're still above where we were last year. And this is a general pattern you see kind of in Louisiana. So people were still going to stores and building materials and supplies. I know I took more trips to Stein and Lowe's and Home Depot during the shutdown than I have in the past 10 years. You know, so many projects to go through with. And the state was doing very well, and you start to see a real pickup in visitation to building materials and supply stores. So overall, we're seeing a nice gradual increase, but different industries are being affected. Grocery stores were doing very well also. If you look at grocery stores, big increase once the stay-at-home order happened, and it's generally been above last year's trend for a general amount for almost the whole time. What I'm showing now is just Calcasieu. This is the best representative data that we have from this. So looking at these deemed essential businesses will give a lot of, uh, it's a real stark contrast. And also the closer grocery goes down, the more restaurants go up. You know, you can sort of track and see, okay, restaurants are finally getting back. Grocery stores are going a little down. Department stores, malls, clothing stores, same impacts. Um, we are getting closer back to our levels than Louisiana than the state. This is good news. We're seeing more activity generally compared to the state. We hope this will transfer to more jobs in the data. And all these, we have these available. If you have questions or want to see a specific industry, we can certainly ask. So what does this really mean for our forecast? What exactly is going to happen? And like I said, it's always subject to change. Uh, whether or not you look at the Lauren Scott forecast or the Louisiana Lafayette forecast or this forecast I'm gonna show you here, they pretty much all point to the same general trend in that 2020 is really going to be the year that we take the hit. Uh, the Lake Charles MSA, we're expected to drop about 7% of, of employment in 2020. And then in 2021, let me make sure I get this right, we're forecast to grow about 1.1%. So what this is really showing is we're going to have a steep drop in 2020 and then just a slight gradual recovery in 2021. So the second half of the year, we're going to see slight increases and then things will slowly start getting back to normal, growing a little bit in 2021 until we start to see a more steep recovery in a few years out. Uh, if you look at gross domestic product, which is a measure of everything an area creates, as mentioned, we're going to see a big drop in 2020, which is 6.7%. Then we'll start to grow a little bit at 4.3 and finally start to kick into gear in the later years. Our unemployment rate, which is this blue line, it's going to shoot up next, or it's going to shoot up this year, as expected, come down a little bit in 2021. 
and then still be relatively high at 7.8 or so. So we're really not gonna get back to normal levels until 2024, 2025. A good news is that personal income in the area is not forecasted to drop that much. And that's not expected for the nation or any of the geographies because personal income includes everything you earn, but also your transfer payments. And with the increased unemployment insurance benefits, the increased SNAP benefits that are coming along the way, uh, you know, economic impact payments, everybody got $1,200. You're gonna see transfer payments kind of keeping personal income up. And that was the idea, give people money to spend so that you don't see a total collapse in consumption. In fact, the latest report says that there was a huge increase in retail sales last month. So what we're really looking at here for now is the drop expected in 2020, slight return in 2021 until we get back to more normal levels. Of course, this is always subject to change. The Alliance is constantly looking at new projects and all developments can happen. There can be positive changes, negative changes, we're not sure, but this is sort of what we're seeing right now. And don't wanna take up too much of your time. We want to be quick, uh, just put a few things. Um, this is our website, our Twitter, our Facebook, and feel free to email or call or whatever if you want to see anything or if you need me to answer any questions, I'll try the best I can. And thank you so much for listening and thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Groff. We appreciate that. And we'll take a few questions. If you have a question for uh, Dr. Groff, if you'll use the chat feature, it's usually at the bottom of your screen and just send your question, I'll relay that along uh, to him. But I'll try to answer it. For the uh, information. And uh, again, as he mentioned, we're always available to uh, furnish you this information or other things about our area. We have Portia Matoya, our research director, and she has a lot of the demographics and information that, uh, that you might want. So hopefully this has been of help to you in, in planning and uh, Someone wants to know, will the presentation be available? Yes, we can uh, send that to you if you'll send me an email and let me know if you'd like to have the uh, uh, presentation, we can send that to you later. Any other questions? If not, I hope you enjoyed your lunch and learn. And, uh, but here's one, uh, one question before we go. Uh, Dr. Groff, you talked about the sales tax, but do you expect property taxes to drop? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff being talked about right now. Um, uh, let's see, sorry, I stopped sharing my screen. Uh, do I expect them to drop? Uh, we'll, we will see, I'm not sure, because I believe this would be a question for the assessor's office too. I think it's based on previous years, right? So it's based on previous year values and it's not based necessarily on this year. So I think the assessor's office has to find a way if they can actually um, sort of take this economic hardship into account. So we have to see how that occurs, but there's a lot of stuff between the locals and the state on that. So let's see if they can get this current value into the previous year value somehow. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it and look forward to talking to everyone a little bit later.